Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the anatomy and physiology of the sympathetic nervous system, also known as our fight and flight system. Now the first thing you need to be aware of is the sympathetic nervous system is a subdivision of the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic sounds like automatic, and what it is, is a system that gets activated subconsciously. We don't consciously control this system. It gets activated in times of fear or stress. Let me give you an example. You're walking in a park at nighttime and all of a sudden somebody jumps out of the bush with a knife. Now, you get scared, you get fearful, and you've got two options. You fight or you run away. Now, you know that when you get scared, your body reacts in a particular way and this is the sympathetic nervous system. The reason why it activates these different organs or structures to do these things is to try and keep you alive in these moments of fear and stress. Think about what happens, right? Your heart rate increases, why? The faster your heart, heart beats and harder it beats, the more blood gets pumped around the body, more blood, more oxygen, more nutrients. That means your muscles can fight or run away. The blood vessels to your muscles dilate so you can get more of this blood and oxygen. The blood vessels to your skin constrict for two reasons. One, if you get cut or injured, you don't bleed out as much. But two, also so that you can divert that blood to the muscles. Your pupils dilate to get more light in to see around you. Your airways relax and open up to get more air in, more air, more oxygen. More oxygen means more energy. All these things happen to keep you alive. Now let's talk about how it happens. Well, the anatomy is important because when it comes to the sympathetic nervous system, it's a two neuron chain. There's only two neurons involved. The two neurons are a preganglionic neuron. Think about it like this. One neuron, second neuron. You've got a preganglionic neuron and a post ganglionic neuron. And the word ganglion is important. A ganglion is simply a, so remember that's a neuron, that's a neuron, and that's the neuron body. A ganglion is simply when one of these neuron bodies sits outside of the central nervous system, and the central nervous system is brain, brainstem, spinal cord. So anytime you have a cell body outside, it's called a ganglion. Now, this pre and post ganglionic neuron, what you'll find is that the pre ganglionic neuron will always release acetylcholine, and the post ganglionic neuron will always release noradrenaline. Okay, simple. It's the postganglionic neuron that innervates the organ. Now, what are the organs? Well, the organs could be the eye, I'll move over here. The organs could be the eye or the salivary glands or the heart or respiratory tract, a whole bunch of different structures, which means the sympathetic nervous system ultimately to activate or inhibit them releases noradrenaline and that's why it's called an adrenaline rush. All right, the preganglionic neuron will always exit the spinal cord at the thoracic or lumbar region. I'll say that again. The preganglionic neuron will always leave the spinal cord at either the thoracic or the lumbar region. And because of that, sometimes you'll see in the textbook, the sympathetic nervous system is referred to as the thoracolumbar system. Okay, now what happens? So when this preganglionic neuron leaves the spinal cord, it's got three options. First option is it can synapse in this structure here. Now this structure is strange. This is called the paravertebral ganglion. Para meaning next to, vertebral meaning the vertebrae, ganglia telling you it's filled with cell bodies of postganglionic neurons. Brilliant. So this preganglionic neuron, like I said, three options. One, you can go straight ahead, synapse, and exit the paravertebral ganglion or it can not synapse and move up, or it can not synapse and move down, all right? Next thing, let's talk about how some of these neurons can leave to innovate these organs. So, first thing I wanna talk about, we'll start at the top of the paravertebral ganglion, then we'll move down. Some of the postganglionic neurons sit in the paravertebral ganglion, some sit in ganglia closer to the organs, and we'll talk about those. All right, first of all, the preganglionic neurons that come out of the spinal cord that can move up to the very top of this paravertebral ganglion 
can sign up with the postganglionic neuron up here and leave. Now this ganglion right at the top is called the superior cervical ganglion. I'm going to circle it and call it the superior cervical or cervical ganglion. And it's called that because the postganglionic neuron, the body sits there. Now, this neuron that comes out, what you'll find is we'll have some branches that will innervate the eye and will innervate certain glands. Now, the eye, what's it going to do when it innervates the eye? It's going to tell the pupil to relax. The pupil relaxes and opens up, more light comes in, you can see your surroundings. This is good when it comes to a stressful situation. You also have branches innervating salivary glands like the parotid or the sublingual or submaxillary salivary glands. Do we want them activated? No, we want to inhibit them because they get activated in times of resting and digesting, parasympathetic nervous system. So it inhibits the salivary glands, but also it innervates the lacrimal gland as well, so tears inhibiting that system. That's the superior cervical ganglion. Now when we look at Neurons that exit at T1 down to T4, what happens is this. They can come out and they, the preganglionic neuron will synapse in the paravertebral ganglion. So they synapse with the postganglionic neuron. They leave the paravertebral ganglion, uh, the pa yes, the paravertebral ganglionic chain. And what they'll do is these neurons will innervate the heart and innovate the respiratory tract. Now what's it going to do at the heart? It's going to increase the heart rate. More blood flowing around the body, more oxygen and nutrients to the muscles to fight or run. It's also going to increase the force of the contraction. Respiratory tract is going to tell the muscle in the respiratory tract to relax, opening up more air in, more oxygen, more energy. Brilliant. Now if we have a look from T5 down to T9, these neurons do not synapse at the paravertebral ganglion. They continue to move through. So this is different. We haven't seen this yet. So far, they've all synapsed in the paravertebral ganglion. T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, all exit and come together. The, the nerve that it creates is called the greater splanchnik nerve. is called the greater splanchnik nerve and it's still preganglionic so it needs to sign up to the postganglionic neuron so the greater splanchnik nerve will continue and it will synapse in a ganglion called the celiac ganglion now the postganglionic neuron from the celiac ganglion that comes out and that innervates the esophagus, it innervates the stomach, it innervates the pancreas. Now, what you're gonna find is a branch of the greater splanchnik before it synapses with the postganglionic neuron, so this is still preganglionic, will go to the adrenal gland and it innervates the adrenal gland. Now, think this is a preganglionic neuron going straight to the organ. We haven't seen this yet, right? It's always postganglionic, which means it's releasing acetylcholine. The adrenal gland acts as though it's a postganglionic neuron and it releases adrenaline into the bloodstream. This is good because when adrenaline is released into the bloodstream, all of these organs get activated and you get a full systemic sympathetic response. What else happens? Well, we've also got from T11 and T12, they don't sign up in the paravertebral ganglion. Similar to the greater splanchnik, they come together and they form something called the lesser splanchnik nerve. Lesser splanchnik. And the lesser splanchnik also moves into the celiac ganglion. And neurons from this will come out and they'll innervate the small intestines. But another important point here is that a branch of the lesser splanchnik can come out into another ganglion. And this ganglion is called the, inf uh, the superior mesenteric. Superior 
mesenteric ganglion. And the postganglionic neuron of this will innervate the large intestines, most of it excluding the rectum. However, what we're going to find is that from T11, L1, L2, these neurons come together into the inferior mesenteric ganglion, inferior mesenteric ganglion, and this postganglionic neuron innervates the rectum, innervates the renal tract, innervates the reproductive tract. And again, this is called the, if that's a superior mesenteric ganglion, this is the inferior mesenteric ganglion. Now what's happening to these structures? Well, we want to overall inhibit small intestine motility, inhibit large intestine motility. We want to inhibit the renal system from urination and with the reproductive tract, at least in males, what we want to do is sympathetic nervous system is responsible for ejaculation. How do you remember this? Point and shoot. Point, erection, parasympathetic nervous system, shoot, ejaculation, sympathetic nervous system.